Let us compare the two important characterization techniques, X-ray diffraction and transmission electron microscopy. You might ask me that why I am comparing two different techniques, but there is a reason. Let me explain you the two reason why I am comparing these two techniques. The first one is both XRD and TEM use diffraction phenomena. We also call it basically scattering. In the case of XRD, we use X-ray, while in the case of TEM, we use basically electrons. The second reason is very, very important. A sample may appear amorphous to XRD. For example, when we get XRD, maybe we get the peak like this. This is here the 2 theta here and here is basically intensity. We get the, the, the peak like this, the broad peak. So we can simply see that we see that the material is amorphous. But once we do TEM analysis, that sample appear crystalline. How we know? We, we know from uh, the, the high resolution uh, images. We also know from selected area uh, electron uh, diffraction because it is embedded in TM. So from there, we we saw that, that there is a diffraction spot or clear rings. So from there, we say the material is crystalline. So where is the problem? This is the problem is basically we also get this broad peak from nanomaterial in the case of XRD. You see here in nanomaterial in amorphous give exactly the same shape. So XRD we don't know that whether the, the material is basically amorphous or nanomaterial. But once we perform TEM then we understand, we clarify that oh the material was basically crystalline. But why the broad peak? The broad peak was because of from nanomaterial. This is why I need to compare these two uh, techniques, right? And moreover, basically, uh, XRD method could not resolve the issue of difficult crystals here. You see here, and therefore we have to use electron microscopy in uh, crystallographies. You see here, this, 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 these techniques basically complementary uh, for each other. You see here, the XRD data can be confirmed with the result obtained in TAM. And both techniques are complemented to each other. You, you can see here, this is the high resolution uh, TEM images here. And this, I, I can clearly see this is polycrystalline material. One grain here, another grain here, another grain here, you see, it is polycrystalline material. It is polycrystalline. If it is single crystal, so we will see here, like one grain here like this. You see here, one grain. The material will be full one grain. But this is polycrystalline and this is XRD here basically, this is the XRD and we also see this is polycrystalline because one peak, another peak, another peak, another peak, another peak. You see here, if it is single crystalline, we will have only one peak here, right? Now let's differentiate here. In XRD basically we use X-ray to probe, is a probe and here we use electron, I already explained here. Both techniques basically use diffraction phenomena to explore uh, uh, the material properties, right? XRD study big crystal. This is this is what I explain here. Micrometer size crystal. If we decrease the size below 120 nanometer, then it is difficult for XRD. Why difficult? Because of that broad peak. We get peak like this, and we don't know if it is it is a marvelous or nanomaterial. So the, the problem comes from there. And TMJ basically study very small particle, nanometer range, right? As I explained, XRD is basically indirect method here, and it is uh, provide a statistical information uh, for a bulk of material. Good for that. We basically study the bulk here. And TM is basically direct method. You can see here, uh, but sometimes you cannot see the boundaries here. You see here, the boundaries always cannot be seen uh, properly because because of the small nature of the material. Uh, in XRD, it is difficult to reveal defects crystal. Very important here. Let me explain this here how. I will make another video for, for this. Uh, as, as we get here, the, the, the broad peak here, in the case of XRD here, this is the 2 theta here, and this is the intensity here. So
So basically amorphous material, if you see amorphous here, if we have a, uh, let's see here is a polycrystal material and here is one crystal here, very good, one crystal here, here another crystal is here like in this form here and this is another crystal here in this form here. But when here is some amorphous material disorder and that is also called defects here or impurity. So we will get broad fee and that we do not know whether this basic, this broad fee is because of the impurity or because of the nano material is explained also if we decrease the size we also get the, uh, the, the, the broad peak. Uh, we also got the broad peak for nanomaterial, right? Uh, so, the, for XRD, it is quite difficult to reveal about the defects, but in the case of HRTM, uh, it's very easy to see here uh, between two grain, uh, whether there is a defect on the grain boundary or not, right? So it is very easy for a high resolution team. This is XRD basically give the average good estimation for the average sample. We, this is why we for one data uh, we basically uh, uh, use this uh, 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 Scherer formula to give us the crystallite size. But this is the average crystallite size, the average crystallite size, the average. The XRD gives us the average. This is statistical. Uh, but this gives us the local structure information. This means that what they say is basically it gives us in the fact, for example, look here, what local structure. Uh, we, this TM just focus very small area. So we only see here in small area whether the grain size is basically 10 nanometer, right? We only see here. We only see here whether the grain size is basically 10 nanometer or 10 nanometer. But XRD, this, this is basically, uh, it gives us the average because this is a big sample. Here it is very small. This is small area we focus here. This is why it, they say here that it only obtain the information from the local structure here. You see here. Another good important, this is I took from some literature, this. Uh, this is I will explain the structure factor, basically scattering factor. A uh, 10,000 times more strong electron atomic scattering factor than X-ray. This means that electron diffraction is far better uh, to observe basically light atoms basically in the presence of much heavier atoms. So electron basically, uh, TM basically see uh, things, we see things from the end. So this is, and uh, electrons basically uh, good uh, for probed in the X-ray. Uh, because of this uh, property, the 10 times a stronger electron atomic scattering factor. Right? And finally, uh, both techniques basically use the same, pre pre the same principle and that is the diffraction. Diffraction basically means scattering.